Hello, everyone. I am Daniel Du, and I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation on what's new in Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server 2012. I'm working as a developer consultant since I joined Autodesk in 2008. I'm based in Autodesk Beijing office. My job is to provide API support for aiding customers, mainly focus on Autodesk MapRite Enterprise, Map3D, and Sql3D. I also would like to introduce my colleague, Pasa, who is based in Bangalore office. He will assist me during the Q&A session. In this session, we will introduce Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server. Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server software is a web-based mapping software that helps AEC professionals to publish and share CAD, GIS, and other infrastructure asset information quickly and cost-effectively via the Internet. Here are the themes we are going to talk today. We are going to talk to infrastructure extensions, interoperability, productivity, and scalability. Infrastructure Map Server includes the components come from MapGuide, including MapGuide Server, Web Extension, Infrastructure Studio, and the License Manager. It also includes the components come from Topbase Web, including Topbase Web Extension, Topbase.NET Framework, web layout, and data models. There are also some other new components as well, including GeoRest interface, IVR interface, which is provided as a technical preview. We can do our design and analysis work in Map3D and publish to WebGuide so that the users can browse the map from web. We have another authoring tool, MapGuide Studio, to help you to assemble resources into web layout so that users can view and interact with the data across the network. If a built-in functionality cannot meet your requirement, you can also create your own web applications during, using MapGuide API to implement your own business logic. Here's an overview of uh, new features of Infrastructure Map Server 2012. It includes the consolidation of MapGuide Enterprise and Topbase Web, the interoperability, uh, scalability and performance, product line components, end-user productivity improvements, and the developer productivity improvements, and other improvements and enhancements. Firstly, let's have a quick look at the various components that make up the extended MapGuide Enterprise environment. At client tier, users can access the infrastructure data via different types of viewers, including Ajax Viewer, Fusion Viewer, and iViewer. Autodesk MapGuide Studio, or MapGuide MS tool for the open source map option, is a tool for authoring. At web tier, besides the MapGuide web extension, there are also other extensions components, such as the infrastructure application extension, IBO extension, and the GeoRest web service extension. MapGuide server is the one handling all geometry processing. It is on server side. If you are using other Autodesk 2012 products, you will see the very similar installation in UI when installing AIMS on Windows. It uses a unified installer for Windows. Another change is AIMS on Windows uses standalone licensing mode, which means you do not need to configure a license server. Well, for AMS on Linux, continues using network license mode. Only the code server component requires license.
Besides the existing localized version of MapGuide and Topbase, in Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server 2012, there is a Japanese version, which is new for Topbase. Next, we are going to talk about the new features and capabilities. WMS and WFS. This enhancement is to provide 100 reliable and OGC certifiable WMS and WFS publishing service in Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server with support for the latest standards. We have already got the certification for WMS 1.1 and 1.3 and WFS 1.0 and 1.1. Another enhancement is to publish in WMS from a map definition instead of a layer definition. In previous release, when published in WMS, you have to define parameters for each layer individually. If you have many layers, for example, you have hundreds of layers, you need to publish to WMS. So it will be very tedious work. In Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server 2012, you are able to save a lot of time as some parameters like uh, coordinate systems and boundaries will be defined once for all. Another exciting improvement is you can set the boundaries for different special reference systems more easily with the help of map preview. So you can set the boundary or set a different coordinate systems visually. Autodesk Infrastructure Studio provides enhanced styles for labels and for each geometry types, including lines, points, and polygons. Enhanced styles allow you to combine text and symbols and create complex outlines and fields. However, enhanced styles cannot be added with the previous version of Infrastructure Studio or with the certain custom applications. Conversely, you cannot add standard styles when enhanced styles are in fact. Standard styling is provided currently for those who need 100 uh, capability with the existing applications or workflows. But you are encouraged to use the new stylization UI, as the old one may not be available in future versions. A very common requirement comes from customers is to add a logo or name of their company into the map as a watermark. In Infrastructure Map Server 2012, we are offering a new resource tab and a new UI in MapGuide Studio to define one or more watermarks for map definition. The watermark can be an Im image or a text. Watermarks are also published within WMS layers and the plots or prints. As you know, in previous release of uh, MapGuide Enterprise, you are able to embed the three types of uh, commercial layers, including Bill Maps, Google Maps, Yahoo Maps as a base map. In Infrastructure Map Server 2012, we will have another two options. OpenStreetMap and Google Terrain. The plot widget in previous release of MapGuide Enterprise is quite limited, but uh, we have a powerful plot widget in top of base web, Quick Plot. Today, this functionality has been moved into MapGuide. It is available for MapGuide users.
As you know, we can generate tiled maps if you are using this map group. The tiles will be rendered and cached when a map is requested for the first time. Many customers want the rendering work can be done processed automatically in a specified time span, maybe in late night. In Infrastructure Studio 2012, a new UI is imported in Map Editor to set the parameters and start this process. It is also possible to create a batch file so that it can be added into schedule task of operating systems to run it automatically. Another exciting feature is the uh, iViewer, which enables users browse map guide data from uh, mobile devices such as iPad or iPhone. It is both single and multi-touch navigation, integration with the location API, using consumer maps as a base map, and providing the basic map browser tools, including pan and zoom, and etc. It is just a simple web, web extension. Users do not need to download or install any applications on their devices. GeoRust is an open source project, which is developed by SL King. If you do not need a map viewer as an interface, just want to get the data comes from map guide, or you may need to use the data in another system, GeoRust may be the one option for you. It provides a new method of interfacing with the map guide server via standard HTML and the template files. It can provide many types of GIS data which comes from map guide including HTML, XML, JSON, KML, and etc. Now let's do some demonstrations. Firstly, I would like to demo the watermark, how to create a watermark resource and add the watermark for, for a map. Now I will start Autodesk Infrastructure Studio 2012. Firstly, I need to create a watermark resources. I will new a watermark. The watermark can be image or text. So I create a, a, a watermark with, from an image. I use this uh, image file. I can adjust the appearance, including the transparency, rotation, and the position. I'll keep it for default. Save it. I save it as ADSK image. And I can create another watermark resource. Is this time I would like to use the text. I input the text here. And you can also change the format of the text. I make it make it bold and choose the font and the size and even you can change the color you can also change the uh, transparency rotation you can change the rotation you can also change the position I'll save this 
watermark resources with ADS key text. Now I can add the resources to the map. I open a map resources. In this map, I have already uh, added two watermarks. I deleted firstly. Now I can use this button to create a new, uh, insert a new watermark. To insert the watermarks I just created, and insert another one. So, you, so you can add more what more than one watermarks for for one map definition. You can also change the drawing order of the watermarks. I make the text on the top of the image. Let's uh, preview. You see? The watermarks is already on the map definition. I can save it. Okay, let's go uh, get back to the four point. Another demonstration is the quick plot. Quick plot is uh, one of the widgets for Ajax viewer or Fusion viewer. So I would like to so that uh, Ajax viewer, I firstly I uh, open a basic web layout. So that a uh, basic web layout. So that uh, Ajax viewer, and here is our plot widget. I can input a uh, Title Next. subtitle and I have a checkbox advanced options. I'll check this advanced options. You can specify the, the boundary of the printed map. You can specify the paper size. This Scaling and the DPI. You can even rotate the printed. After you accept your configuration, you can click the generate button to generate the preview. Okay. We have the preview of the plot. We have a title and subtitle. We have scales. We have a north pointer. And if all is okay, I can print. I can click the print button to print. To to send my plot to the printer. Okay. Let's get back to the four point. Another demo is uh, map tiling. I open infrastructure studio and I open a, a tiled map resources. If you want to use the tiled map, you need to use the base layer group. In this map definition, I have created one base layer group and add some layers into this base layer group.
you can specify the nearest zoom in and the widest zoom out and the number of uh, scales. MapGuide Studio can compute a scale list for you. The new stuff in Infrastructure Map Server 2012 is, is the pre-catch tiles. We can generate pre-catch tiles. You can set a boundary visually. For example, I want to create uh, the tiles for this part. And you can also specify the number of threading. I in twenty five. Now I can create a generate button to generate the tiles right now. I can also create the save script button to create a a BAT file. Now I will create the generate button to generate now. It's it's very fast because I, I do not generate very much. I just uh, generate a small range of of the map. The tiles is successfully generated. So the tiles is, is generated and it is cached in the MapGuide server. So I would like to check with MapGuide server. Program files. Autodesk. Infrastructure map server 2005. And uh, repositories, tail catch. Here is the catch of um, our child map. This is the uh, where our uh, generated child map is catch. Okay, let's uh, get back to our PowerPoint. I think you must be familiar with this graph. As a cross-platform product, MapGuide can be deployed on Windows and Linux, developed with .NET, PHP, and Java, served with Microsoft IIS or Apache Web Server, and browsed with the most common used browsers. And the Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server supports the latest browsers. And we have more good news from open source communities. It includes the uh, MapGuide Open Source 2.2 .2 and uh, Maestro, FDO, GeoRest, FDO Toolbox, FDO2, FDO, and the OSGO Lab. OSGO Lab is a self contained bootable DVD or USB thumb driver or virtual machine based on Linux that allows you to try a wide variety of uh, open source skill special software without installing anything. It is composed entirely of uh, free software, allowing it to be freely distributed, duplicated, or passed around. It provides the pre config application for range of special use cases including storage, publishing, viewing, analysis, and uh, manipulation of data. It also contains sample data set and documentation. And we have uh, the new FDO providers for special light and mapping for. Now let's move on to the topic of for building custom applications based on Autodesk Infrastructure Map Server 2012.
As we talked earlier, we have three options to develop custom applications for MapGuide. You can use .NET, PHP, or Java. In this session, we are going to talk about how to create MapGuide applications using .NET. We can choose Visual Studio 2010 or 2008 as our integrated development environment. If you are if you are using VS 2010, please pay attention to select .NET Framework 3.5, not 4.0. For 32-bit of AMS, it is exactly the same with the process to create a custom application based on previous release of MapGuide. You can create a ASP.NET ASP website on local IIS, copy all the MapGuide.NET assemblies to bin folder of your custom application, initialize web tier, connect to the MapGuide server, and embed the MapGuide viewer in your web page. But for 64 bit of IMS, it may be a little tricky. You may run into the problem of uh, could not load file or assembly when compiling in Visual Studio. There is no problem when running. One solution is to use web applications instead of websites in Visual Studio to hide this problem. Let's have a quick look at the process. First step, to create an ASP.NET web application. And uh, we need to select .NET Framework 3.5. Step two, copy all the assemblies from AMS web extension to your application bin folder. Step three, add references to following assemblies and set copy local to false. This assembly is including osgo.mapguidefoundation.dl, osgo.mapguide.geometry.dl, osgo.mapguide.mapguidecommon.dl, osgo.mapguide.platformbase.dl, osgo.mapguide.web.dl. Please pay attention to you need to set the copy local to false because we have already copied all the assemblies to our bin folder. And the next steps is exactly the same for both 32-bit and 64-bit. We need to initialize web tier using the path of web config INI and connect to the MapGuide server using a MapGuide uh, user information object and then create a MG site object, open the MG site object using our user information object and create a session string from the set object. And we, we will prepare the web layout using MapGuide Studio, get the resource ID of the web layout. And step seven is to pass to pass the session string or and the resource ID of the web layout to the existing to to Ajax viewer. We need to embed the Ajax viewer into our web page. Please pay attention to the parameters session and the web layout. Now, step eight. Now for, for six little bit, remember we are using web applications rather than website on local IIS. So we need to do some configuration work in IIS manager to create a web applications and set the path to our folder of custom web applications. We need to also select uh, application pool, and it is recommended to select the 
MapGuide app 4 which its name is Map Server 2012 app 4 If you do not like this application pool, please make sure the application pool you selected is using ASP.NET 2.0, not 4.0. Now we are almost done. You can start a browser to view your custom applications. You will see that your Ajax viewer has already embedded into your custom applications. Now we are going to talk about how to debug, how to debug your custom applications. We do not use F5 to start debug here. We will use a touch to process instead. Firstly, start a browser to launch your application and select a touch to process in debugger menu and attach to w3wp.exe process. Please pay attention to the app pool to select the correct process. If the w3wp.exe does not show up, you may need to check show process in all sessions. After attaching the correct process, your break, po your break point should be hit. Let's talk about how to extend the customer function for MapGuide Viewer. MapGuide Viewer has already provided many built-in functions. But as a developer, you probably want to create your own command to execute your own business logic. We can create two types of a custom command in Infrastructure Studio. Invoke script or invoke a URL. This custom command can be added to web layout. In, we can add it to task plan context menu or toolbar. Then we need to implement this custom command ourselves by JavaScript or, or a web page. Now I will show you a demonstration how to build a custom applications based on 64-bit of Autodesk infrastructure map server. Okay, next I will show you a demonstration how to build AMS custom applications based on 64-bit platform. I am using Visual Studio 2010 here. You can also use Visual Studio 2008 if you'd like to. Firstly, I need to create a project and I select ASP.NET Web Applications. And please note, you need to select .NET Framework 3.5. And I give it a name here. I put it to this folder. I need to just copy it for later use. OK. And now I have created uh, common ASP.NET web applications. Step two is to uh, copy all the assemblies of MapGuide into our custom applications bin folder. I open uh, 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 Explorer and find my project bin folder. I need to copy it all the assemblies from infrastructure map server extension 2012 ww map guide map viewer night bin folder I use control A to select all the assemblies and copy and copy it to the bin folder of our custom applications. Paste here. Okay, let's get back to the Visual Studio. 
I need to add the references. Add the reference here. The reference I can add it, add it from the bin folder of my custom application. I need to add the assembly started with the OSTO, including OSTO.mapguide.foundation, OSTO.mapguide.geometry, OSTO.mapguide.mapguide.common, OSTO.mapguide.platformbase, and OSTO.mapguide.web. Next step, I need to set the copy local for set the copy local to false because I have already copied all the assemblies into the bin folder. Okay. So in the first page, I need to embed it uh, Ajax viewer into this first page. Ajax viewer is using frame set framework, so we need to uh, embed a frame set here. In the, the second frame is is my Ajax viewer. The source is uh, the source is a, I can get the source of the uh, I can get the source of uh, Ajax viewer from from map guide CD. For example, I need to embed it this this one. From the map guide CD of the web layout editor, you can get the URL of the Ajax viewer. Yeah. Copy it. We need to pass the parameter web layout and the session. So we need to publish delete this existing value. I put uh, input uh, parameter name. I also need to publish the session. Session parameter. Okay, uh, now I have a, now I have embedded a map guide view into my first page. Next step is need, I need to generate the uh, session and the web layout. New code. I declare a public. Uh, public variable it's my web layout and uh, session so uh, firstly I need to add um, namespaces 
video dot map guide. For every page, you need to initialize web tier. Using the static uh, static method of um, map guide API, passing the path of the web config file. This file is located in the uh, infrastructure map server web extension 2012 ww. This file. Copy the location, copy, and paste it here. Web config dot dot ini. Now I need to declare um, mg user information object user info and I to need to in use my uh, administrator administrator and the default password. Now I declare a uh, MG set object. And open the the map guide site. Passing the user information object. Now I can get the session string. Dot create session. Now we are already got the session string of the uh, map guide. Next step is to prepare the web layout. So I need to go back into the map guide studio or infrastructure studio. Of course, before you do that, you need to prepare the data including the feature source, the layers, maps, and web layout. I have some data prepared. So I need to create a web layout here. For example, I need to create a new web layout. Create a new web layout, new basic web layout, and use my maps here. Like my maps here and uh, save it save it as a um, basic okay save another name In this default basic web layout, we have already some uh, left pan, middle pan, and the right pan. We have already a uh, layer pan, property pan, toolbar, context menu, status bar, zoom control, and uh, task pan, task bar, and etc. And we have also some built-in built functionalities, including the mirror, Buffer and zoom, zoom in and the pan, something like that. We can refresh, we can preview it. We have already have a basic web layout. Next step, we need to embed this web layout into our custom applications. So I need to get the resource ID of this web layout. I create a, a right click this um, web, app, web applications, select properties, and get the resource ID. 
you can copy the resource ID and copy it to the user studio and the web layout is uh, equal to Okay, now I have uh, created the session and uh, prepared the web layout. I need to compile it. Build. No problem. Now I need to start as manager to create a web applications and point to our custom applications. I need to add the application. I got an alias name is MT2005 Web App. And this, the physical path is uh, the folder I just uh, created for the customer application. Path is This one, copy, and paste, paste here. Next, we need to select application pools. Here, uh, I need to select uh, Map Server 2012 app pool. Please pay attention to we are using .NET Framework version 2.0. Okay. Okay, we are all set. Now we can browse our uh, custom applications in browsers. Select browse here. I select a browser to browse my custom applications, localhost mge 2012 web app and my uh, first page. This is my actually my uh, basic Ajax viewer that has already embedded into my custom web applications. In this basic web applications, we have already the many built-in functionalities that comes from Map Guide. You know, as a developer, you may create a your custom command. For example, I need to create a uh, command uh, called map information to get the, all the information of this this map. For example, I need to add it to the toolbar or the context menu or the uh, task task pane. So I will go back to Map Guide Studio to edit the web layout. Here I need to create a new command here. In this command, I will uh, invoke an URL. Give a command name is uh, map information. The name to display in the interface, I call it map information. Actually, it, it can be localized uh, character here. So, for example, for Chinese, you, you, you can input a Chinese or Japanese, any a local language here. And the tooltip and uh, input the description. It's a map. So, map information. And now I can set the URL to invoke when I, I activate my command. The URL is can be like this. My custom web uh, web applications. Uh, and uh, 
a web page that's called uh, mapinformation.aspx. Actually, this uh, web page does not exist. Uh, I'll create this web page uh, next. And this command uh, do not need to select anything. So I uncheck this. And I can I need to show the result to task pan. Okay, I create my custom mount and I need to add the custom mount to to toolbar. Add it to toolbar. You can also add it to context menu. And also add it to uh, toolbar menu. Okay, I saved my I save my this web layout. Now if I refresh my web applications, refresh, you see my new command has been added to the Ajax viewer. If I click the command, because this map information web page is not exist. So there's the error. So next step, I need to create this web this web page. I back to Visual Studio and add a web page. And a new item and a web form name is uh, map information. In this page, I will show the information of the map. In our page, firstly, you need to initialize the web tier and connect to map guide server. So, firstly, you need to initialize web tier. And connect to map guide server. The third step, I can get the information of map. So since the first step and the second step is the most common used task for almost every page, so I would rather to get it from a task library. So I have an existing task library, so I can add it uh, existing Class library, which is uh, created. So as existing class library, it, it is um, class lab to to lab. In this class library, I created some very common used method, is including the initialize web tier and connect to map guide server. This is just a common class library. You can create a new one by new project and add a new class library and then add a reference of the map guide assemblies, including the map guide foundation, the map guide geometry, map guide platform base, map guide common, and map guide web. So in this whole class library, I initialize web tier and uh, connect to map guide server. In the web application project, I need to add a reference to our tulip project. Add reference project using add reference to my AMS 2012 tulip project. And uh, using the namespaces and uh, 
declare a utility class which is um, I created in the class library of AMS 2005 tool library and use this one this method this utility to initialize WebTL it needs the current HTTP request object and uh, connect to the map gadget server In this page, I need to connect to MapGuide server using the existing session. Use the session which is created in the first page in the default.aspx. So firstly, I need to get the session stream. I can get the session stream by request object. So pass the session stream, use the, use this session stream to connect to map by server. Okay, now I I can get some information of map. Actually, I have already created a method in the utility class. Get map information. So I will uh, look at the implementation later. So this method needs to uh, map name as a parameter. So firstly, I need to get the the map name. The map name I can also get the from the request object the reason I can get the session and the map name because this web page is invoked by custom command of map guide. So the custom command can pass some parameters including the sessions, web layout, map name into this web page when the, when it is invoked in map guide viewer. So I can I can get the these parameters from a request object. So I pass the map name here. And uh, it returns the map information string. And finally, I can respond dot write the map information to the web page. Okay, I complete my code. I rebuild it. Build, no problem. So now I added some breakpoint here and start the debug. As I said, I do not use I I do not use F five to debug. I would like to use um, attach to process, attach to process, and find my w3wp.exe process and pay attention to the username to by the map server 2012 app core and uh, attach attach and I refresh in the browser to invoke my command okay my breakpoint is hit So I press F11 to 
back into the implementation of initialized web tier. This way, I firstly get the physical path of uh, my web application and get the path of web config INI, which I copied from the map guide web extension to the current path of my web application. And I initialize web tier use this web config file. And then get the session string. The session, the session string is created in the first page of the web application. And use the session string to connect to MapGuide server and press F11 to see how it is implemented. Firstly, I need I create a user information use the existing session string and open the set connection. And now I get the map name from request object and uh, call my uh, custom method to get the map information. So firstly, I need to create um, resource service by set connection dot create service passing the service type as the resource service and get the resource service object and create a new MD map object and open the map. After the map is opened, so I can get the map information, including the the coordinate system information of the map by map dot get map SRS and get the map layers, including the layers count and uh, each the name of each layer. Okay, finally, I response right the map information to the web page. Okay, so in the web page, I got the information of the map. It's including the coordinate system of the map, uh, count of the layers, it's eight layers in the map, and the name of the each layer. Finally, I'd like to share with you some uh, useful resources to learn more. First, you are welcome to check the homepage of AMS on Autodesk.com, where you can download the white paper and apply a trial version. There are many useful tips for best practice on best practice wiki website, which helps you to create a high performance map guide web application. In demo galleries, you will find many demo applications based on MapGuide Enterprise or MapGuide Open Source. MapGuide Central is a custom search engine which helps you to find your answer faster. And another we need to pay attention to is from the MapGuide 2012, the documentation is moved up to Internet so that it can be maintained all the time to keep it up to date. This also makes it possible to search by a search engine such as uh, Google, and, uh, Yahoo, and something like that to find your answer even faster. And thank you for viewing this presentation. And I appreciate your time. If you have any questions and you are ADN members, please feel free to log cases through the ADM website. And if you are not ADM members, you're welcome to drop me a mail to daniel.du at autodesk.com. Thank you for your time and bye for now. Have a nice day.